Eneman, the Marvin Chewing Gum Laxative, presents fun facts and fun page features in the original radio show of its kind, the fascinating game. Now then, double or nothing. Music by Brusilov. Announcing Eloy Tavrilla. Salute to the American Theater Wing. Guest contestants. Helen Menken, Lucy Monroe, Madge Evans, Brock Pemberton, and Larry Adler. And awarding United States War Stamps for Peenemann, the originator of Double or Nothing, Walter Compton. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. No group has given more lavishly of its time and talent to the war effort than this nation's theatrical performers. And so tonight, Double or Nothing pays tribute to the entertainment world's organization, the American Theater Wing, dedicated to serving and entertaining the men in our armed forces. Five famous and hard-working members of the Theater Wing, plus a sailor-soldier double-double team, are going to try to win those United States war stamps that Phenomen awards to quiz winners. So swing our star-studded celebrity cavalcade into action, Aloy Savrilla, and bring on that first contestant. Okay, Walter, and facing the personality parade is the lovely star of stage and screen, whose husband, Sidney Kingsley, noted playwright, is a member of our armed forces. Here is Madge Evans. Hello, Miss Evans. How Hello. are you? See, it's nice to have you up here. That's a strong box. Yes. And that we put war saving stamps with the compliments of Phenomen, Miss Evans. I don't know why they had to do this to me. I mean, I want to work, and then you start first. Why didn't they put Pemberton up here first? I could have gotten... That's it. what I asked <laughs> He refused. He said I had to break the ice so that he could come in when they were warm. <laughs> okay, this question from Miss Laura S. Schreck of Camden, New Jersey, who gets $5 for sending it in. Which one usually bites you, Miss Evans, Mr. or Mrs. Mosquito? Um, oh, dear. Um... Uh, Mrs., I think. That's not bad. Five dollars goes in oh. there. Okay. I feel better. You feel better. What happens now is you ad lib for a minute on the subject of the question. Every time you get real good, we'll pay off some money, and then you're going to get one more question, and that's the double or nothing question, and you've got to be good. So let's go. Well, now let me see. The, uh, the female of the species is more deadly than the male. Three dollars. Uh, she, uh, she has to have blood to hatch her eggs. Uh, the... Okay. She has to have human blood to have her eggs. Really? Uh, only three? Oh, oh another no. dollar. I won't put it. Uh, wait a minute. Now, there's a mosquito boat. There's a, a dollar. mosquito fleet. Another dollar. There's a play about the mosquito. What? A yellow jack. Miss Evans. Um, oh, two dollars. Well, it's true. I didn't believe it. Don't believe distract it. me. Right. Um, let me see. <laughs> now, two dollars. I distracted her. Go on. Um... Oh, dear, it lays its lava on the water. Citronella's good for me. Four dollars for Citronella. I live in Jersey, and that's where the Jersey mosquitoes come from. I'll buck for those Jersey mosquitoes. They're very large. They're worth more. All right, another dollar. <laughs> They're very hungry in Connecticut, I believe. They are? Yes. They're not very large, though. Just one dollar. Uh, I can imitate a mosquito. You can? Oh, the clock did it for you. Twenty dollars. Now. Then. <laughs> Have you been hearing this? I heard it, yes. <laughs> Double or nothing. Go ahead. How many legs has a mosquito? Quiet, please. Oh, dear. Um. Has it six? It has six, yeah. <laughs> United States plus 20, $40, $45 in all, Miss Evans, and that was pretty good on that double or nothing question. You got right in there and guessed good. Thank you. Will you give it to the stage door canteen, please? I'll leave it again there. Thank you, Miss Madge Evans. Thanks a lot. Walter, your next guest star is radio chairman of the American Theater Wing. But you know her best for her memorable performances in Seventh Heaven, Mary of Scotland, and The Old Maid. Currently, she's adding new laurels to her brilliant dramatic career with a radio broadcast on the program, Second Husband. Meet Miss Helen Menken. <laughs> Welcome to Double or Nothing, Miss Menken. But before I give you your quiz, we'd like to talk with you a minute about the American Theatre Wing. All right. Just how to get started. Well, Walter, it all came out of a little black book. 
Written by our president, Miss Rachel Crowther. Oh, yes, the author of Susan and God and Let Us Be Gay. Uh huh, that's right. About 25 years ago, Miss Crowther and six prominent actresses helped organize the theater to entertain our doughboys in the last war. And they called themselves the Stage Women's War Relief at that time. And their efforts were tremendously successful. Well, what about the little black book, Miss Benson? Oh, well, fortunately, Miss Crowther kept an itemized record of this wartime organization. And it's been most helpful in our present work. Well, tell us some of the things the American Theater Wing does, Miss Well, Benson. one of our activities is a speaker's bureau to help sell bonds for our government. Now, you know, this really takes training. Actors and actresses are known never to be too good at figures. You know that. <laughs> Maybe your agents could help you, Miss oh. <laughs> The agents have been wonderful, Walter. Why, you know what they've done? Given up 10%. No commissions. All to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and more, of course. 10% more to the government. And then let me see. Oh, yes, we have first aid classes and uh, the blood donors for the Red Cross. And we give performances for worthwhile charities. And then we have sewing rooms, and we're very proud, very, of the soap that the Florence Reed has designed. Why, we've sent thousands of them to our men in Iceland and Newfoundland. Well, I understand that in a poll conducted among the servicemen, the boys voted your organization stage door canteens their favorite off-duty rendezvous. Oh, yes, it's wonderful. Our canteens are pretty popular with the boys, and it's our dream and hope to have one at every important military center. Right now, we have one in New York, and there's one in Philadelphia, Washington opens in about, well, two weeks, and Boston, too, and I'll let you in on a secret. Yeah, just between me and the microphone. That's it, Walter. Betty Davis is going to open a stage door canteen in Hollywood. Mm. Isn't it difficult to supply entertainment to canteens far removed from the entertainment centers? Yes, in a way, but the American Theater Wing plans to overcome that problem by sending the talent to these points if they can. That is, from Broadway and Hollywood and Chicago. That's excellent, but uh, expensive, Miss Mankin. Yes, but... We have a sponsor now, Walter, a series of radio programs based on our New York State Door Canteen starts on another network next Thursday night. And I understand credit for that deal goes to you. Not at all. Not at all. Not to me, but to the wing. And, of course, the credit goes to our sponsor. <laughs> oh, golly, the radio business has such charming men. Oh, oh thank you, Miss Lankin. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, all members of the theatrical profession are a part of your organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. It means the stage, the screen, and the radio, and all its allied crafts. Why, you're a member of Lloyd's and one of the finest bus boys we've ever had. <laughs> and, you know, we're very much interested in our canteens that are going to be located outside the big theater centers because they'll give our unknown youngsters who want to be entertainers a chance to perform, too. You mean the boys and girls now studying in little theater groups and dancing? Yes, children. Walter. Those children... Who are the stars of tomorrow, perhaps? The boys and girls who carry on the tradition of the American entertainer and the theater. I pray every night that we'll never have to open our little black book again. And when this war is over, we'll pass that little black book on to these youngsters as a heritage, a tradition, so that if it becomes necessary, they too will someday bring a little happiness to our fighting men in times of stress. Thank you very much, Helen Mankin. But now you give me that little script we've got here, and I want to see whether you can ad lib as good as you can read. Oh, I don't know. I didn't read that, so I really am never got a question on my mind. Here's your strong box. All right, there's nothing in it. I know that. Just Oh. Why do people always say it? Nothing happens till the double or nothing question. If you're really good, we really take off. I see. I see. First question comes from Oliver Sheehan of Portland, Maine. He gets five bucks for sending it in. I want you to name a lover who was a Don and a tennis player. Who is a Don? Oh, my goodness, Walter. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah. Who else could I think of but Don Juan and Don Fudge? Okay, oh, Don Juan and four to go. Give me five dollars. There we got it now. Let's go. Now, what happened? You had oh, this for a minute. I see. Well, now, Don Fudge, he, uh, he cleaned up in the laundry business. All right, two dollars for Don Fudge in the laundry business. And he wielded a very uh, mean racket, if you know what two I mean. Bucks. I'll wield a couple there. <laughs> 
I never saw him, but my mama John told me. Oh, Miss <laughs> Mankin. Okay, $3 for the pun. <laughs> uh, mama John told me he has red hair. Just like yours. Oh, Two mm-hmm, bucks. Mm-hmm. But that real Don Juan has uh, black hair. And uh, I have a Don Juan, too. You do? I haven't seen my Don Juan for a long time. He's at Camp Gordon in Augusta, Georgia. Five dollars. Oh, wonderful. He'll be pleased for that five dollars. Well, anyway, there are soldiers and sailors and Marines. Three dollars, three dollars. Three dollars. Stage three dollars. door canteen, wonderful three bucks boys. Three dollars for the stage door canteen any day of the week. <laughs> but they're all done one, too, to somebody That's or someone. That's you're really trying to get in. <laughs> no, all right, two dollars, they're all done really, one. Really, really, Walter, don't you think that history fills up this done one question? Uh, oh, there goes that clock. <laughs> Twenty-two dollars. Is that? Well, Madge Evans got 45. Oh, Here's I'm your double or nothing question now, then. Oh, I'm undone. Double or nothing. Give me one of the Russian names for the Don River. Don River. I know it's not me. Mama do not tell you that, but I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Russian. Dostoevsky. No, it's easy. Uh, John. Donna, Tuna, Donna. Tuna's all right, Tuna's all right. That's okay. Oh, all right. Forty-four plus five. Forty-nine dollars. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Mankin. Stay your canteen, gentlemen. The police are there. Thank you very much, Mr. Mankin. Hello, is um, I've got a ham and chicken. Music, Brucey Love. Oh, MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. No, 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 no. I'm trying to tell you that I've got a plant that looks like a spiny cactus. Oh. Some people call it hams and chickens, and back in the Middle Ages, they called it Jupiter's beard. Mm, so you've got a cactus. Well, now, back in the old days, Lloyd, folks used to think it made a mighty fine remedy. You mean people ate this spiny cactus stuff? Yes, sir. And here's the recipe. First, you stomp the plant with the heel of the boot. Until the juice runneth. Collect the juice and drink it. In the Middle Ages, it was supposed to be great stuff. Well, that's a queer one, all right. But queerer than that, some people still take some mighty grim-tasting, old-fashioned laxatives. And that's so unnecessary, when they could take the good-tasting, modern chewing gum laxative, Phenomint. So, folks, why don't you give yourself all the benefits of a modern laxative the next time one is needed? Just chew Phenomint at bedtime. As with all medicines, take it only in accordance with package directions. Get a night of undisturbed rest. Start the next day feeling like a million again. Thank you, Lloyd Zavillo. Walter, your next contestant is one of Broadway's most distinguished producers. When he isn't sponsoring such comedy hits as Strictly Dishonorable, Personal Appearance, or Kiss the Boys Goodbye, he's busy serving as master of ceremonies at the American Theater Wing Stage Door Canteen. Here is Brock Pemberton. Strong box, sir. Will there be anything in it? I don't know. Let's see how, many, how well you can produce up here. <laughs> they tell me you've got a new show starting soon, too. Thank you for the. What's build the up. name of it? Janie. Janie, when's it going to open? In a month, I hope. Okay. First question coming up now. Viola E. Ray of Los Angeles, California gets $5 for sending it in, and the Sterling Drug Company gets a special award. What uh, celebrated traveler's name is that of a sport usually played by wealthy sportsmen? How long do I get? <laughs> you don't get along, Mr. McClunk. Just keep going over there. Well, I've learned never to look a quiz question in the face. You look at it backwards. And taking it backwards, the wealthiest game I know is polo. That's right. What's the man's name? Marco. That's right. Five dollars and more stats goes in there. Let's go, Mr. Pemberton, see you line. Let's really produce this time. You've got to beat forty-nine dollars from the second. The uh, most famous polo field in America is the Meadowbrook. Two dollars. In England, where the international match- matches were played, it was Hurlingham, just outside London. Uh, he's telling me now, two dollars more, okay. Can I get a three dollar question on this? I don't know, work up to it. Uh, the late <laughs> Will Rogers is a great polo enthusiast. Uh, I'll give own... you three dollars for Will Rogers. He had his own field, a dollar for that. A dollar, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking these are not a dollar for that. The most uh, prevalent, if not the most popular headgear at present, was. Originated by Polo, the helmet is worn by millions of men. That's now. right. Three dollars. I haven't got any of that bad here. Keep going. Tell me some of those. Will get 
<laughs> well, how do you play polo? The, uh, you play it with a mallet and a, a ball. dollar. And a dollar for the ball. Whoa, there goes the clock. My goodness. Thirteen dollars now, then. Double or nothing. <laughs> Why, John Kieran Evans got what, 20 or something? Like that? <laughs> we got 45. That mosquito expert. <laughs> well, last law, look at Miss Evans and look at and you. Miss Mankin. <laughs> <laughs> Double or nothing on the 13th, Mr. Pemberton. Can a horse score in polo? Not a horse, but a pony can. A pony go. That's right, that's right. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. $31 more saving Sam's copper would have seen him in. Sorry, there's not more to give the American Theater wing. Give me $5 more, and let me put $5 more for the American Theater wing. Yeah. Now we got it back up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Now then, Walter Compton, here's your double-double team, and they're two members of our armed forces, William Priory, Yeoman Third Class, and Nat King, Private First Class. Step up here, boys. William Priority, I don't believe it. Priority is right. Was, was it really Priority? That's right. Is this Davy Jones? The locker unit. <laughs> we have got more people who can make funny remarks about our empty strong boxes. Well, that's not your question, Georgia. Now you have to look down there. <laughs> Here we go. Comes from Harold East Building of Chicago. He gets five bucks. This is a very hard question. If you were walking along the street and came across a free for all, would you pick it up, ignore it, or call the police? <laughs> Make your mind, sir. Uh, I think I'd call the police. You'd call the police. What would you do? New York has the greatest police force. Okay, all right. Give me a photo. <laughs> Boys, the subject is yours. Uh, I think uh, Valentine is police commissioner. What do we give to the police? Two dollars. All right. The shore patrol isn't so bad, are they? The shore patrol is good for the uh, uh, military police. Three bucks, bucks for the military <laughs> police. How about five bucks for the motorcycle squad? Three dollars for the motorcycle squad. Now, wait a minute. I can rattle off squads by the dozen. How about the emergency squad? Oh, right, the a dollar. Riot squad. Another dollar. Um, I'll give you two dollars for the riot squad. Oh, yes, yeah, the homicide squad. A dollar. A dollar? Oh, they don't have a dollar. They tell me you can find a, a, a cop on every corner. Yeah, when they take their jackets off. Oh, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't get that, but I'll give you a dollar for that, too. Uh, say something for five dollars, will you, please? Um, That's been terrific. Can you find a cup on every corner? Oh, no. <laughs> Did I give them $5 for that? $5. Oh, uh, they also use motorcycles. Uh, I don't have a motorcycle. I don't have a horse. Um, say something for $2. Oh, they use a dolly car, too. Which, uh, oh, $2 for the dolly car. How about those speed cars? Radio, radio cars. Three dollars for a radio car any time. Uh, one more. What happened to the free-for-all, I thought? Oh, yeah. How about that guy? Oh, my God. Why don't you have to do it? Uh, oh, yes, they have an organization called the PAL. Whoa, 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 whoa. Twenty-nine dollars. Top so far. And this is the double or nothing question, gentlemen. And I cannot repeat it to listen very carefully. Translate the following. After the fracas, they put me in the black Mariah, took me to the cooler, and fixed up my shiner and my Charlie horse. Uh, after the fight, yes. uh, they put me in the station wagon. That's all right, or police patrol wagon. Uh, Fixed up my eye. Yeah, it took you somewhere first. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, took you to jail. Took you to jail and uh, fixed up your eye and... and uh, my child horse needs my hand or... Um, uh, the kink out of you. That's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's 29 plus 29 is uh, $58 plus 5 is... $63 in United States War Savings Stamps with Cotton of Thank you, uh, Mr. Gentlemen. Compton? Yes, sir. I'd like to give 10% of this to the stage door canteen. Well, we'll see if they get it. Okay. Take it back to Glenn. She'll pick it up for you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Compton. Our star tenor, Frank Forrest, writes me that he's having a wonderful vacation in California. And just the same, 
I'll bet Frank envies me right now. Uh -huh. Why? <laughs> because I'm taking Frank Forrest's place to present your next contestant. The lovely young lady who handles one of the standard features of the New York stage or canteen. The star spangled songstress who leads the rousing community things, Miss Lucy McGraw. Anybody can hear any queer noises. It's my knees knocking against the mic. <laughs> I'm surprised you, Miss Monroe. Miss Monroe. You come up here in a black dress. Where's that red, white, and blue concoction I saw you in once? Well, I'm awfully sorry. Here's some red and here's some white. <laughs> okay. yeah, kind of blue in my okay. Here's your strong box. Your question comes from Muriel Allenson of New York City, who gets $5 for sending it in. What three men were in a tub? And, you know, in rubber dub dub three men in the tub. Three men in the tub? rubber dub dub three oh, men dear. in the tub. Uh... Quiet, please, could, it, uh, could it have been the, the, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick it's maker? It's Joe lady. It's Joe. Oh, not all Joe's in there. Let go. Well, uh, I can think of some awful puns of the butcher and baker. Go right ahead. Can we have puns? Yeah. <laughs> Two dollars each, Miss Monroe. Well, uh, the butcher, uh, he'll always meet you halfway. Ooh. That's terrible. Oh. Oh, no. I'll give another dollar. I and promise the, two dollars. The baker, the baker needs dough. And that's worth two dollars. Don't we all? Yeah, that's worth two dollars more. <laughs> the candlestick maker. Let me see. Well, candles are... Well, he's are, just an old uh... stick in the mud. I'll take it. Oh! <laughs> candles are the I can't oldest, understand uh... that, can you? <laughs> Go on, you do You're it. You're much worse than I am to make it feel comfortable. <laughs> I'll give you three dollars more because I admit it. Well, candles are uh, the oldest form of lighting, I should say. And, of course, you can burn a candle at both ends. You but uh, I don't know if you do it. It won't last very long. About the baker, you you couldn't have met Newton D. Baker, could you? I'd give you two dollars for him, though. You would? I think he's worth more than that. <laughs> Another dollar. These people really are on to me tonight. I'm not kidding you. Name something Tell three. me, it's oh. three minutes. Oh. What were you going to say? How much time we have that awful. Well, I'd like to talk about If there were three men in the boat, I was wondering if you'd like any, uh, any threes. No, 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 no. We've got $17 here now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a double or nothing question. Now then, double or nothing. What kind of difficulties have butchers in many sections of the country run into this past few days? Oh, that's not so hard if you read the newspapers, I'm Greg. Uh, they have uh, had a hard time, I believe, getting beef and pork because it's going to the government, right? A lot of the pork is. It's all right. I'll accept that as correct. That's okay. <laughs> Four dollars plus five, thirty-nine dollars in United States war savings stamps. Thank, Thank you, you so Mr. much. I'd like to have to leave this with you for the American Theatre Wing stage well, door yes, candy. Oh, of course, we'll be set. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Who's it on roll? Once upon a time, there was a guy named Joe. He was a good guy most of the time. Brought home the pay envelope every week remembered the kids' birthdays, and sometimes took his mother-in-law for a drive in the car on Sundays. But, like most of the rest of us, it sometimes seemed to Joe that the world had ganged up on him. He got the idea the boss had a special grudge against him, and that the kids made an awful lot of noise around the house. The dinner didn't taste good, and it was a terrible job to get up in the morning. It isn't any fun to feel the way Joe felt. Yet how often that sunk, unhappy feeling so many of us have is due to just as simple a thing as the need for dependable laxative medicine. And it's then that millions of wise folks turn to Phenament, the modern chewing gum laxative. It's as delightful and convenient to take as your favorite chewing gum. And more important, Phenament brings gentle and dependable relief. So if the need of a laxative ever gets you feeling that the world is down on you, try Phenament. And get back on the sunny side of life. Thank you, Lois Avila. Friends, I'd like to tell you how you can get in on the fun of double or nothing. Send us your questions addressed to Phenomint Mutual Network, New York. The questions first received and used win $5. And if you include your friendly druggist name, he too may win a special award. If duplicates are received, the first entry we get and use naturally wins. All questions become the property of double or nothing, and our judges' decisions are final. We pay $5 for each question used on the program. Remember, address yours to Phenomint. Mutual Network, New York. Walter, you know good things come in little packages. You referring to war stamps, Lloyd? No, not at this moment. I'm talking about our next guest, hip pocket Stradivarius, the mouth organ. And when this harmonica hype it flows to town, the applause is deafening, whether coming from the audience of servicemen in the stage door canteen 
for the white tie trade at New York Savoy Plaza. Meet Larry Adler. Well, how are you, Lawrence? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, you should know a lot about music, and you do know a lot about music, don't you? <laughs> you know a lot about music, not what? You don't know. <laughs> well, you ought to know a lot about music. <laughs> what was that last one? <laughs> that means who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> I just thought I'd translate it. Oh, Oh, I got it. Okay. Question comes from Miss Emma E. Frost of Newark, New Jersey. Five bucks for sending it in. What are the names of the bodies of an automobile, a ship, and an airplane? The bodies of an well, the body of an automobile is a chassis. That's right. A ship. Hull. Hull and an airplane. Um. Airplane. No, the body. <laughs> the body part. Of it. All right, I'm working on it. <laughs> I, 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 I do know, but I don't. Harmonica players are awful, too. I know, but it's just a, a few uh, syllables. A few syllables. Yeah, okay. I'm going to pretend that he didn't give me any hint on that. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I've got to talk about That's those things. Right. Well, I was just reading in a magazine today that Mr. Melton, James Melton, has an excellent collection of automobiles. All ah, right, for the life of me, I can't understand where you're so, but I'll give you three dollars. You're as bad as Mrs. Mon Miss Monroe. Uh, he has Stanley steamers, a dollar. and he has those electric automobiles which come in very handy these days. Uh, yes, very no, no handy dollar. indeed. Uh, airplanes seem to be achieving a new impetus in this war due to Major Seversky's book. Or somebody else's, four dollars. I visited the Henry Kaiser shipyards on the West Coast, and I saw ships being made such as have never been made. Mr. Kaiser's worth four bucks, too, Mr. Mr. Adler. Kaiser's worth a lot more to this country. Two dollars more. Um, he's building ships faster than anyone in the world has ever built them before, and now he wants to build transport planes to ferry supplies That's to the nations that need them. Three bucks. Uh, I have been up in a plane, and I get very sick whenever I am, but I go up anyway. That's a nice admission. Two dollars more. I've always wanted to fly my own plane someday when people are allowed to, I hope to. Two bucks, you might help do it with this. Time's up, though. You've got twenty-two dollars. Now then. Double or nothing. I'll say double, I'll get nothing. You ran right smack into mathematics. That's me. What was the total tonnage of those airplanes that Henry J. Kaiser recently suggested we construct in the nine converted shipbuilding yards per year? The total tonnage per year. Now, you know about him. You just told me that. How many planes a year, and uh, what was the tonnage of each? Then you have to multiply it quickly. Um, frankly, I do not know. Oh, come on. Take a guess. 300,000 tons. That's a nice round figure. It's not close enough. I told you I was a dope. You wouldn't believe me. I didn't believe it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Larry. 350,000 tons. Wow. Well, you were close, though. Anyway, the money you accumulated, that, uh, how much was it, $22 and all? Will be sent to your favorite charity, which I take it is the American Theater Wing. Yes, as I Plus say, I five. left my heart at the stage door canteen. That ought to buy it back. We'll send that to the stage door canteen. Thank you very much, Larry Adler. Thanks a lot. Next week's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, will salute those daredevils of the air, the American volunteer group of Flying Tigers, represented by Walter Pentecost and Alan Hine, the writer. Our guest star will be Glenn Gray, leader of the famous Casaloma Orchestra. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mr. J.W. Johnston, manager director of Victory Garden Harvest Show, for his kind expressions of appreciation for our broadcast last week. Now then, this is Walter Compton speaking from New York, saying goodbye to you. You don't want to suffer a minute longer than necessary when you have acid indigestion, isn't that right? Well, then listen to this. Here's a handy new chewing gum way to get extra fast relief from gas, sour stomach, or heartburn due to excess stomach acidity. It's called Chews, C-H-O-O-Z, and it brings extra speedy relief for two reasons. First, its three medically approved ingredients work fast. Second, you don't have to wait till you get home and mix up powders or fuss with bottles and spoons. You can chew chews wherever you are without embarrassment. So you tackle acid indigestion the moment you feel it coming on by chewing extra fast acting chews. Chews is not a laxative. Chews contains no soda or sedatives. Is not habit forming. Get chews now. Ten quick acting tablets cost only ten cents.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.